So this video is going to be divided into two parts in one video. So the first part is going to be about three minutes. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen the video of Chenk, uh, the link's on the screen, I'd watch it. It's uh, seven minutes long. And then after the first three minutes of uh, my thoughts on it, um, I'll kind of break down Chenk's argument and where I think he's kind of uh, starting to become less of an ideologue, which is, uh, I think, important especially for the Democrat Party to, you know, recover. I've noticed that Cenk Uger is actually um, slowing down the ideologue process. I mean, you know, he used to be 100% ideologue. Then it's like 99.9. .9. Now he's like a 98.89%, which is still pretty terrible because on my scale, you should be preferably under a 20% when it comes to an ideologue, if not a 0%. I'm sure people will have their own scales, but this video where he uh, defends in part Trump's so-called Muslim ban and he says that the logic behind it and the authority of it is perfectly legal and whatnot um, in a way and I find it interesting because you know this is one of his videos where you know it's just uh, you know it's just him and his iPhone and the background and you know you don't have Anna Kasperi and, and the uh, the rest of the TYT gang um, <laughs> in the background. So I'm wondering if he's self-aware, you know, <laughs> if Shank Huger is self-aware um, that a lot of the rhetoric on the left is just like complete ideologue, ideologue bullshit. I mean, I wonder if he, I wonder if like six months from now, a year, whatever, or, you know, halfway through Trump's term, or maybe if he has a second term, he'll be, he'll, you know, scale it back a little bit more. I mean, he'll scale it back, but I wonder if he realizes the responsibility of the media to fairly report, um, you know, the news and, you know, stuff regarding our country and politics and whatnot, because it seems like he, he is, um, because this is the second video that I watched that really caught me off guard. So I'll put a link to Cenk's video, um, the most recent one he did, where he defended Trump's ban in part, and um, the previous one that I mentioned, as well as any other ones that I come across. Uh, but I like to give credit where credit is due, because we are not going to win the so-called culture war by just keeping our boot on the left and saying, ha, 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 you lost, you're wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, people don't respond to that, so I like to give credit where credit is due, you know, you know, have some common ground and whatnot. So I thought I'd just bring that up because I find it very interesting, and I'm hoping someone else on YouTube, uh, maybe some classical liberals will find it interesting. I know more conservatives probably won't, which... I hope I'm wrong about, but, you know, it's TYT, so, you know, the hatred for it is pretty strong and justified, but, you know, again, I like to give credit where credit is due. So I was just going to do a short critique, but uh, I ended up uh, wanting to make a few points on a bunch of stuff he said, so kind of pause and talk and then, and then let it play. Um, and I'm going to be critical, but I'm also going to show the good points. And so Donald Trump's case in court on his travel ban in a second. But I don't want anybody to get confused about my position on the travel ban. Yeah, Cenk, I don't really think anybody would get confused. You don't, you don't have to virtue signal too much. Just, uh, you know, keep talking. It's horrific. I like how he says it's horrific very dramatically. <laughs> It's just a little bit hyperbolic to me. Um, horrific would be something like, uh, I don't know, actual human rights violations. But anyways. So uh, let's separate out what my thoughts are on policy versus what my thoughts are on his court case. So uh, first of all, the travel ban is a Muslim ban. Okay, let's just keep it real. This is actually a good start because he's looking at it from, you know, a not just a personal opinion and policy perspective, but, you know, kind of like a, a legalist opinion. And he's, he's doing really well until he throws in, it's a Muslim ban, which 
it, it's not. But um, but he's really trying here, guys. So. So now I'm not the guy saying that. Donald Trump was the guy saying that during the campaign. He said repeatedly, over and over again, it's a Muslim ban. It's a complete and total shutdown of Muslims. Uh, yeah, that's great. But he didn't say that in court or in the executive order. Uh, you can't go back in time and you know put the statements in court, despite what the uh, Ninth Circus thinks. And is it effective? And is it necessary? Of course not. As many people have told you a thousand times, including us. Uh, the seven countries that he banned have had a total of zero uh, fatal attacks inside the United States in the last 40 years. So it is demagoguing 101. It is clearly intended for religious purposes. He says that Christians should be prioritized. Clearly a Muslim ban. And yes, it doesn't apply to all Muslim countries. But once you have uh, picked these seven uh, Muslim-majority countries, you can certainly begin to expand it. So it's a terrible idea. It's an un-American idea. Now... Even more dangerous was when there was five federal judges who told him in different jurisdictions that you are not to continue this banning or to let the people go who were detained, and he did not listen to them. Yeah, I don't think he uh, was so much not listening as he was just mouthing off. That was horrible. That could have been a constitutional crisis. That is worse than the original travel ban in the... So I'm just sort of going to fast forward through all this stuff because there's a lot of opinion. I mean, half the video is opinion, but... A little bit of gold is what I want to shine on. Let's go to the heart of the issue that I brought up in the first place, and hence my slight defense, which is now some folks in the media are saying Trump saying in court that uh, that the executive branch should get to decide immigration policy and not the judicial branch is crazy talk. I can't believe it. He thinks there shouldn't be any judicial review. Yeah, I don't think he's claiming there shouldn't be judicial review. I think he's probably just claiming that the judiciary branch is being obstructionist and they're not on solid legal ground where he is. But um, that's just a minor critique. And let's get to the juice. On the other hand, if a president says, hey, you know what? I think there's a specific threat coming from a country, whether Yemen or Norway, it doesn't matter. Um, and hence, I'm going to slow down um, uh, people coming in from that country, does the executive branch have that power? The answer is almost certainly yes. And by the way, that is actually similar to what President Obama did in Iraq. Now, I'm really glad that he actually said this because this is actual, this is fact. This is rooted in law. The executive branch uh, is in charge of enforcing uh, U.S. code, uh, defending the United States against uh, threats uh foreign and domestic, uh, and border security falls under that purview. And it's why the Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice are under the executive branch. He slowed down immigration from uh, Iraq for six months while they pursued a specific threat of people who had entered the country. No, there was no Bowling Green massacre, but yes, there were two guys that worked on roadside bombs. They came in from Iraq and were in Kentucky. And so that was a specific threat that they were talking about. So the Obama administration on that specific issue asked for and received leeway in deciding what our immigration policy is. So now, as you can see, that's a sliding scale. That's a, a gray issue. It's not a black and white issue. So is it crazy for the Trump administration to say, no, the courts don't have uh, leeway here to decide who is and is not allowed into the country. The executive branch has leeway. Whether I agree with them or you agree with them, it is not a crazy argument at all. It's a perfectly normal argument. And and by the way, one that they might actually win on, because the Ninth Circuit might look at it and ultimately go, well, there's good evidence that we think it's a Muslim ban, but we can't prove it, or the other side, uh, more importantly, obviously, can't prove it. I think this is important because uh, the burden, I don't know, shouldn't, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think it should be placed on the president in this specific case, um, just because... Um, the EO wasn't written uh, to disparage any specific religion. Um, so it's really really just a country ban. So the other side has to prove that it's a so-called Muslim ban. They can't just uh, claim it with campaign promises or campaign statements or Twitter posts prior to the executive order being 
written. The judges were the ones that judged, not the ones put, that put on the case. The other side did not make their case well enough to prove that it in fact is a Muslim ban and is unconstitutional, and the executive branch does have great leeway on immigration issues. So they might rule that, that Trump is right ultimately and let the ban continue. Um, I think this is an important point because this is an example of judicial activism uh, where judges rule based on their personal opinions and not based off the law. Uh, and I have no tolerance for judicial activism. And it seems to be something that uh, neoliberals are a big fan of. Um, Ruth Ginsburg likes to use it a lot as an example. And I know I pick on her, but I'm just using an example. Um, you really have to apply the law um, just blinded. You can't, you can't go with what's popular. And I think the uh, three-panel judge um, on the Ninth Circuit, three-panel judges of the Ninth Circuit, really were practicing judicial activism uh, and not ruling based on the law. And the ruling was far too quick uh, and... Honestly, something like this should be reheard and bonk, uh, which is, you know, all all the judges on the court, uh, since the Ninth Circuit is so big, uh, it's usually like 11 or 13 um, judges uh, that would hear the case and bonk, uh, similar to, uh, to something like a Supreme Court hearing, uh, but obviously not as binding. But in bonk hearings tend to be uh, very well respected. So an embank hearing could have the effect of being bad because if they roll not in Trump's favor, Supreme Court might not pick it up. But since it is such a hot topic, I think it's going to the Supreme Court anyways. But uh, regardless, an embank hearing would probably be very appropriate. So look, when you're making uh, arguments against Donald Trump, let's please keep it rational. And, and he let's not fall into the trap that he does. Uh, I don't think Donald Trump is falling into any traps. I think, you know, there's a lot of debate about whether Donald Trump is really stupid, average intelligence, or if he's just some, you know, like, super genius that's playing fourth dimensional chess with politics. Uh, a lot of the stuff he says is reckless, but at the same time, it tends to um, have a really good effect. Uh, if anything, the media is falling into the trap that Trump is setting himself. Do you feel that my style is wrong or my substance is wrong, trying to fact check the president? I, I, I think it's, uh, and I'm, I mean this with um, truly no disrespect, but I think you can uh, border on being sort of quite a ridiculous figure. Um, it's not a good look to s repeatedly and self-righteously defend your own self-interest. The media should not be the story. For him, everything is out of control. Everything is, you know, code red and, and the other side is all wrong, etc. Let's not do the same thing. Let's look at it rationally and go, okay, here's what makes sense and here's what doesn't make sense. So yes, the, I think the ban is crazy. Uh, I'm totally against it in policy grounds, but it is not crazy for the executive branch to say that they should get to decide uh, immigration laws. And uh, by laws, I'm assuming chink means uh, enforcement of laws, specifically the discretion used uh, in which countries may or may not be allowed to send their uh, foreign nationals, whatever, their residents to the United States. So it, it's good to actually see some ration from TYT. And I don't know who's going to prevail at the end, but I do know that both arguments are arguments that have been made in court throughout Democratic and Republican administrations. Let's keep it real. So that was the end of his video, and he's right. It's been an uh, issue on both sides of politics. And I think another thing that a lot of people probably overlook is that uh, it's, it's good to score political points with something like this as an attorney. One thing that I noticed uh, with the uh, Washington State and the Minnesota State uh, Attorney General and Solicitor General's office, when they prevailed at the district court level, and I believe the circuit level, um, they took like an acceptance speech, like they're at the Grammys or something. And um, that publicity is always good for attorneys. And You'll notice that the attorneys are pretty young, um, so that's that's 
way to get looked at. Um, particularly, a little bit off topic, but solicitor generals are usually, most states usually don't have a dedicated SG's office. Um, but it's kind of a growing trend. And SG's tend to be younger, uh, and they tend to um, come and go a lot more faster than an attorney general so that's one thing i noticed so there's definitely a political point scoring element uh, involved in this and i also find it interesting that the two states involved washington state and minnesota both had uh you know terror attacks from foreign nationals or people that immigrated from foreign countries and became uh u.s residents or even U.S. citizens. It's kind of like Europe, where they just run to um, defend, uh, you know, Islam and whatnot, and immigration and whatnot, even after all these attacks. Um, and, you know, the U.S. has you know, independent states, and you can kind of look at them as, you know, little mini countries. So, interesting little parallel there. So, that's all I really have. Um, thanks for watching. America Sheriff out.